Algae blooms on Lake Erie have led to some major problems, including a drinking water hazard. But not that long ago, this really wasn't a big concern. So what happened? Fox News' Derek Hever here now to show us what he found out. Derek. Yeah, Hugh and Monica, the five Great Lakes are a true gem for Michiganders. We plan our summers around them, which is why it is more concerning than ever that three of them see algae blooms on a yearly basis, but none of them are as bad as Lake Erie. It really isn't just an Ohio problem or a Western Lake Erie problem. This is a Great Lakes problem, and, and quite frankly, it's a global problem. Every year, beginning in July and continuing until sometimes October, the western side of Lake Erie explodes into a green, sludgy mess. It's a little slimy, um, if you want to think of it that way. So when you go out, um, typically during the height of the bloom, it's really green. It almost looks like paint, like someone dumped a whole bunch of paint into the water. This green layer on the surface is what's called cyanobacteria and forms because nutrients from fertilizer get into the water. These excess nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, is what's fueling these blooms. The blooms are routinely 300 square miles across and can be seen from satellites in outer space. This footage, shot by filmmaker David Ruck for the upcoming documentary, The Erie Situation, through Great Lakes Outreach Media, shows just a small part of a big problem. We get blooms that can, you know, be you know anywhere five to six times the size of Washington, D.C. Algal blooms on Lake Erie have been around for decades, but they got significantly better in the 70s and 80s, thanks to the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. But then, you know, we kind of took our eye off the ball and they uh, essentially resurge. It's not just that they've come back. The blooms we see today are different than the blooms that we saw back in the 1960s and 1970s because they seem to be uh, much more toxic and they're dominated by a different organism than the blooms were back then. This toxicity is what worries Mike Brisky, who says that during a bad bloom, his family's 35-year-old marina and bait business plummets. For the smaller boaters that, that don't want to go that far offshore, they, their, their choice might be to stay home or go play golf or do something else. They're not buying bait. They're not, they're not shopping with me. On top of that, the fish aren't biting like they used to. The numbers of limit catches are down. The numbers of people that go out and have a completely unsuccessful, that's, that's up. The first test indicating trouble came Friday night in Toledo, Ohio. Famously, the bloom led to the 72-hour Toledo water crisis in 2014 when wind blew the algae right towards the water intake valve. All of a sudden, the intake was taking in water that had a lot of toxin in it into uh, the finished drinking water, which then caused the do not drink order to be issued. Since 2002, the algae problem has been getting significantly worse. We've seen two of the largest blooms in recorded history um, in the past 10 years. Climate change is likely to blame. Warmer temperatures can produce blooms that are more intense and possibly even more toxic. The reasons are twofold. We're getting warmer and our water temperatures are getting warmer. And cyanobacteria like it hot. They like warmer water. So when it's warmer, they'll do better. A changing climate means a changing rain pattern, which is an even larger issue. We have changing precipitation patterns too, right? So we have more rain potentially in this region. So more rain equals more runoff, more runoff potentially it means more nutrients. More nutrients means larger blooms. How can we combat this? Well, it may start with farmers like Jason Rulig who are using GPS technology to become more efficient at spreading fertilizer. We're making sure that we're only putting minimal amounts of fertilizer on in the areas where it's needed and not where it's not needed. 
He also says farmers are utilizing more cover crops to soak up the old nutrients. You see in the background, you know, kind of the brown, that was oats that we planted last fall. So those nutrients that are left over in the soil, we plant those oats, they take up all those nutrients and they store them in the plant material. There's no bad guys here. Everyone wants to solve the problem, but everyone knows it will take effort. It's a difficult task, it's not impossible. We have evidence that we can do it because we've done it once in Lake Erie already, but again, it takes time and patience. There's no quick fix for Lake Erie. More evidence that climate change really is playing a role here. The five all-time worst algae blooms have happened in the last decade, and the biggest threat is the increased heavy rainfalls. Scientists have found that up to 90% of the yearly phosphorus that gets into Lake Erie can be blamed on the 10 biggest rains of the year. Higher temperatures equals more rain equals more runoff into the lake, and that is what we are seeing. Yeah, it's your job to forecast the weather, Derek, but can you forecast how bad this year's algae bloom is going to be? That's a little out of my range, but thankfully Noah does that for us. So 10 days ago, Noah published their forecast for this summer. It's a mix of good and bad. The forecast ranked 4.5 on a scale of 1 to 10. That means that this year's bloom is expected to be slightly smaller than average, but more severe than last year. For the record, the worst ever algae bloom was in 2015. It broke the scale. It ranked 10.5 on a 1 to 10 scale. So we'll hope that this year's forecast proves accurate.